Hello everyone, and welcome to your complete and ultimate Kaedehara Kazaha guide. I have practically been a Kazaha main ever since its last rerun, and have used him extensively in that time in a wide variety of playstyles. This video is to guide any current or future Kazaha owners on how to roughly build and play him. As usual, this video will cover all of the following in order. General playstyles, talent overview, weapon options, artifact sets and stats, team comps, consolation overview, and an Abyss 12 showcase. Normally, I try to condense my information as much as possible, but specifically for this guide, I want it to be very in-depth due to Kazuha's deceptively complex kit, so the information I will be providing might be more exhaustive than usual. As some of you might already know, my main account's Kazuha is Constellation 6, but I will also have footage of my free-to-play account C0 Kazuha as well to demonstrate free-to-play levels of investment. I have used him at every Constellation level and with multiple playstyles for at least a certain period of time, and so I think I have a good understanding of his kit no matter the level of investment. This guide might be a little long, much longer than my typical guides, so please use the timestamps and chapters provided to navigate to whichever part of the video you need info from. With all of that out of the way, let's get right into the guide. Starting with Kazuha's playstyle, Kazuha is a support and sub DPS for a number of scenarios. Firstly, he is one of the largest damage buffers in the game thanks to his A4 passive buffing any element he is able to swirl to the entire party. This makes him fairly invaluable to any DPS user that is Pyro, Hydro, Cryo or Electro, as these four elements can get their damage massively boosted by Kazuha. Even for other elements though, Kazuha is still situationally a good teammate even if he cannot buff them. Geo teams, for example, don't have any form of crowd control, and so slotting in a DPS Kaza can help clear waves of trash mobs that can be very helpful in certain situations or abyss chambers where the enemies are spread out and are weak enough to be taken out by Kazaha. When talking about Kaza's crowd control, there's often a comparison made to the only other strong CCer in the game, which is Venti. In terms of actual crowd control, Venti is stronger with a bigger AoE and better grouping of enemies. However, Venti has a fatal flaw, and that is his inability to pull in larger enemies. Kazo on the other hand can pull in larger enemies that aren't robots, bosses, or ones that have super armor. He also feels much more comfortable to play, as Venti has pretty poor auto-targeting, often shooting his tornado towards a random spot when facing multiple enemies, while Kazuha brings all the enemies towards his center, which makes positioning much more flexible. Venti also has a much harder time ensuring that he infuses the right element, whereas it's much easier to determine infusion priority with Kazuha. To put it simply, when Venti works, he is usually better than Kazuha in AoE scenarios, but Kazuha provides higher damage potential while being easier to manage. Is Kaza the better character than Venti? Yeah, 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 he, he is. I don't think anyone is surprised by that. I also want to cover Kazuha's importance in certain reaction-based teams. Because of his burst infusion and the lack of ICD on its elemental application, Kazuha is really important for a ton of characters for both buffing the DPS and helping them trigger reactions. There are a few examples such as international teams with Child and Ayato, or teams like Melt Gan Yu. His burst is also useful to make it easier to maintain freeze in a wide AoE for teams like with Ayaka or even maintain Quicken in certain Dendro teams. Finally, I want to talk about the long debate of DPS versus EM Kazaha. I actually made a whole video on this topic with a full comparison between the two playstyles many many months ago which I'll link to below. To sum it up though, at lower level investment, DPS Kazuha can be a very attractive option if you do not have some other top tier main DPS. Kazuha's personal damage is pretty decent when built with crit, but once you scale in investment and have better characters, it's not really very competitive, especially at lower constellation levels. An actual DPS that is buffed by Kazuha is going to do much more damage than a main DPS Kazuha. And this is also because Kazuha's damage only from swirls, especially in multi-target scenarios, is also very high, which means you don't actually lose that much in terms of personal damage when going from a DPS build to an EM build. An EM build is always going to give you the highest damage potential for the entire team, and is also much easier to build thanks to the more lenient artifact requirements, making it the preferred option for most people. Of course, if you wish to play a main DPS Kazaha, then don't let that dissuade you. I played main DPS Kazaha very often, even before I got him to Constellation 6, and he's very much viable. It's just that the level of investment to make his DPS build strong is much higher than his EM one, and even then, it won't offer as high damage potential as a support Kazuha in another DPS team. For most people, you really should just go with an EM build and only use a proper DPS build if you really want to play Kazuha as the team's main damage dealer. I'll go over both his support and DPS weapon options and artifact builds in the later sections. Starting with Kazuha's normal attack talent, Kazuha has a pretty standard normal attack string and charge attack, so on paper this talent doesn't seem that important. But 
there is one main scaling that makes this talent important, which is his plunge attack. As I'll mention in a bit, his special plunge attack scales off this talent, so you should still level this for extra damage. Kazuha's elemental skill is very complex and has a lot to go over, but I'll do my best to try to go over everything important. When cast, it launches him up into the air and deals animal damage. He also pulls in enemies towards his center within a fairly decent AoE, which is what gives Kazuha his crowd control. When Kazuha is launched up into the air and you do a plunge attack, his plunge attack will convert to a unique version that deals animal damage and also creates a small vacuum that drags enemies into it. The wind tunnel isn't actually that strong at pulling enemies in, but decent enough for just a tiny bit more CC. Note that the damage for the initial skill scales off this talent, but the follow up plunge attack scales off his normal attack talent. So if you want both of them to do damage, you will have to level them equally. If you hold this skill, Kazuha will have a wider pulling radius and deal slightly more damage. He also flies higher into the air, which might be useful for dodging certain enemy attacks, but it's not really that important in most scenarios. However, Holding this skill does extend the cooldown from 6 to 9 seconds, so unless you really need the AoE or higher pulling strength, I don't really recommend using the hold version very often. But if you have his Constellation 1, you can use the hold version before you use your burst, as that gives more animal particles which he can pick up during the animation of the burst. Speaking of particles, with the tap version he generates 3 animal particles, which increases to 4 particles with the hold version. One thing I need to mention about Kazuha's crowd control is the way people tend to use it wrongly. If you have a large number of enemies around, you don't want to go to the center to use your skill. This is because his plunge attack is considered a heavy hit, which has a tendency of knocking enemies away from Kazaha. Because of this, as much as possible, you should try to keep your enemies in front of you, which will allow them to be pulled towards him, so that even when he plunges, the enemies get pushed towards the same spot rather than get spread out completely. This is a mistake that I see a lot of people make, and for most comps it actually doesn't really matter, but this is really important for certain teams like with Ayaka, where you really need to make sure that the enemies are clumped up closer to each other while maintaining freeze. You might also have noticed that Kazuha's unique plunge attack tends to infuse an element. If Kazuha's skill comes in contact with a swallowable element, his plunge attack will infuse it and deal additional elemental damage based on that element type. Note that he only infuses the element when his skill comes in contact with it on the initial jump. If he only comes in contact with an element while he's already in the air and not from the initial jump, then his plunge attack will not be infused. You might also then be wondering what happens if there are multiple elements on the field. Well, Kazuha has an infusion priority. The order of priority is Pyro, Hydro, Electro, then Cryo. Whichever element is on the field and is higher on the priority will be the one that is infused. This is important to remember as it also applies to his burst which is much more important. So I'll bring this up again later. Last thing to mention, Kazuha's skill can be animation cancelled if you do not wish to do the plunge attack. There are several reasons why you may want to do this, like not wanting to trigger the Freedom Swans buff immediately, or not wanting the plunge attack to knock enemies back. To animation cancel, you can double tap your spacebar right at the apex of Kazuha's jump, which is basically opening and closing his glider really fast to allow him to drop to the ground much quicker. But take note that you can only do this with the tap version of the skill and not the hold version. Moving on to Kazuha's burst. Kazuha will do one big slash that deals AoE animal damage and create his autumn field. This field stays for 8 seconds and will deal 5 ticks of periodic animal damage. Just like his skill, this burst can infuse an element in the same infusion priority of Pyro, Hydro, Electro, then Cryo. Once it is infused, each tick of damage will also deal additional damage of the infused element, and this application has no ICD, which makes maintaining certain reactions or elemental uptime much easier. For example, infusing it with Cryo helps maintain Freeze when paired with an off-field Hydro character, and infusing it with Pyro helps other teams like Melt Gun Yu or the Copium Air Fryer team. This burst damage when running an EM build isn't super high, so it's not really important to level this too much, but it does have decent scaling and personal damage with a crit based build. A few more things to note, the initial slash AoE is really big, often even being able to hit enemies that are almost behind Kazuha or really far away. The initial slash also applies to you Animo, which means that more often than not, it will remove any elements applied on the enemy, but the burst infusion ticks will reapply the element infused anyway with a 1U gauge. This burst has 7 seconds of downtime with a 60 energy cost. I want to get into the infusion for both his skill and burst, as this is often something that is very confusing for many players. Firstly, the infusion can come from any source on the field, such as elements applied on enemies, enemies that have innate elements on them, or even the element applied to Kazuha himself. 
The infusion takes priority from any one of these sources. For example, if you place Bennett's burst down and then burst with Kazaha, no matter what other elements are on the field or on enemies, his burst will always infuse Pyro as Bennett's circle applies Pyro to the active character, in this case Kazaha. This is important to remember as you have to be very keenly aware of your rotational setup with certain teams. For freeze teams, you'll always have to apply Cryo on the enemy first before bursting with Kazaha since Cryo has the lowest infusion priority. Applying any other element first will screw with the infusion and might make you infuse something like Hydro instead. And lastly regarding this infusion, I gotta mention this because a lot of people get this awfully wrong. Infusion is not the same as swirling. For example, in this clip here with Yelan and Bennett, what element did I swirl with my burst? If you answered Hydro, you'll be correct. While his burst infused Pyro, he only swirled Hydro here. The burst will swirl Pyro with his burst ticks afterwards, but the initial hit here only swirled Hydro on the enemy. The reason why the burst infused Pyro is due to the self-applied Pyro from Bennett's burst. You cannot swirl an element off yourself, but its higher infusion priority is what helps his burst infuse Pyro. This is very important to remember because both Viridescent Venera and his A4 passive requires you to swirl the element you want to buff, which means that even if you infuse the right element, you will not necessarily get the buff unless you swirled it as well. Finally talking about Kazuha's passive talents, his A1 was mentioned previously, but it's basically the additional damage from his infused plunge attack after using his skill. This damage does scale off attack and can crit, so it can be decent extra damage for DPS builds. His A4 is arguably the biggest part of his kit. When Kazuha swirls an element, he grants a percentage damage bonus to that specific element to the entire party. With a 1004 elemental mastery Kazuha, swirling an element grants a party-wide 40% damage bonus to that element, which is huge. This increases any Pyro, Hydro, Cryo, Electro character's damage by a ton, and is the reason why Kazuha is one of, if not the biggest damage buffer in the game. This passive also works off-field, so you can maintain this buff with his burst. However, do take note that Viridescent Venera does not work off-field, so you might still have to swap into Kazuha during a rotation to maintain VV uptime anyway. <laughs> Moving on to Kazuha's weapon options. He has a lot of weapon options depending on the playstyle, so I'll go over them in order of star rarity as usual, then compile and segregate them into his support and DPS options at the end. Starting with Kazuha's best weapon, the Freedom Sworn gives the highest amount of EM and has a team buffing passive. The passive is really really long, but to summarize, once Kazuha triggers an elemental reaction twice, he will grant a 20% attack boost and a slight bonus to normal, charged and plunge attacks for the entire team for 12 seconds. You can immediately trigger the passive of this weapon by doing his skill and then plunge attack, assuming he swirls both on the initial jump and the plunge attack. You can tell the passive is active when this shield looking symbol appears on the active character. I say active character because this passive can be triggered off field, which means Kazuha's burst alone can proc this passive with its burst ticks. This is easily Kazuha's best option for his support potential, and is also decent for his personal damage. Kazuha's other 5 star options don't really help his support potential, and are more catered towards his personal damage. The Miss Splitter Reforged and the Primordial Jade Cutter are his best DPS swords, with the Jade Cutter being a better universal option, and the Miss Splitter being better for those either playing with C6 Bennett or have Kaza at C6. I happen to play with both a C6 Bennett and have Kaza at C6, so my preferred option is the Miss Splitter thanks to its high damage passive, but Jake Cutter's massive crit allows for more flexible build options, even at C6. Just pick either sword you have and build around it. Other 5 star swords can work, but they aren't anywhere near as good as Miss Splitter or Jake Cutter. Light of Folia Incision is pretty good, especially if you have Kaza at C6, but it's really just not that worth it using this for a DPS Kaza when Jake Cutter and Miss Splitter both exist. Haran is also in the same boat, where it is decent, just not as good as either of the top two. Moving on to the 4 star weapons, Easily Kazuha's best 4 star option is the Xiphos Moonlight. This gives the highest amount of EM for a 4 star sword, while giving a ton of ER from its passive. Even at Refinement 1, the amount of energy recharge this weapon provides is super helpful as C0 Kazuha has a pretty high energy recharge requirement if you want permanent burst uptime. On my free to play account, my Kazuha has around 180% ER, which increases to 226% ER with the Xiphos's passive. This is by far Kazuha's best 4 star sword, 
and a no-brainer to use if you have it. Though this is a limited gacha item, so you can only obtain this sword from specific weapon banners that carry it. Alternatively, if you don't have Ziphos' Moonlight, Iron Sting and Tokabu Shigure are your next best options. Iron Sting is completely free to craft and offers the same amount of EM, but has a relatively useless passive, so I do not recommend refining this weapon at all since it'll work just fine at R1. Tokabu Shigure also gives the same amount of EM and has a better passive, but it only really is good in single target scenarios, so it's also not that much better anyways. Next up, we have the energy recharge weapons. Sacrificial Sword and Favonia Swords both give a ton of energy recharge, which helps fulfill his ER requirements for permanent burst uptime. Sacrificial is a bit more of a selfish weapon, but can work as a full C1, while Favonius is a good team support weapon as it gives extra white particles. I know some people like to argue that the energy recharge weapons are better than and the 4-star EM weapons like Iron Sting, so I'm going to explain the difference here. Using an ER weapon will help with your burst uptime, but takes a small hit on his damage buff. If you value his burst, then yes, you can use it. But this only applies to people with bad artifacts. As mentioned previously, my free-to-play account Kaza has over 180% ER even without the Ziphos' passive, and I'm running all EM main stats with over 980 EM. So hitting his ER requirements with just substats alone is definitely very achievable, which is why I only recommend using these ER weapons if you have bad artifacts. People who try to argue that these weapons are better are just people with worse artifacts, so it's not really true that these are better than the Iron Sting or Tokabe Shigure. I only really recommend these weapons if you value Kazuo's burst and have bad artifacts. If you can achieve over 160% ER from substats alone, then just use the other weapons like Iron Sting instead. Finally for DPS 4 star options, generally, 4 star DPS swords aren't very good, so your options are kind of limited. The Black Sword is probably the best option, but this is a paid weapon from the Battle Pass. Amenoma Kageuchi, Black Sword, and Kagotsurube Ishin are all okay and will work but are just not amazing. Honestly, if you don't have a 5-star DPS sword, there really aren't many other good options. Finally, Kazuo's best 3-star sword is the Dark Iron Sword. This weapon is free to obtain and gives EM in its substat, making it a good low investment option for newer players. To sum it all up, here are his best weapon recommendations separated into his playstyles. I'd say for his DPS playstyles, the 4-star weapons are really not very good, so if you don't have a 5-star DPS sword, I have a hard time recommending this playstyle. His support build is spoilt for choice though, so just use whichever weapon you have on the list. Moving on to Kazuo's artifact stats. Now, he has two main ways to build him, his DPS and support builds. For his support build, it's very, very simple. You should go EM on the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet. The only substat you have to worry about is Energy Recharge. At C0, I recommend at least 160-180% to ER if you want to be able to burst every rotation. You may also need more if you're facing single target scenarios like against bosses. With full EM main stats and some substats on the Flower and Feather, you should be able to achieve over 900 EM very easily. If you have Freedom Sworn or have really high rolls on both your Flower and Feather, then 1000 Elemental Mastery is very much achievable as well. With 1000 EM, this gives his A4 passive around 40% damage bonus to the element he swirls. I recommend this build for the majority of players. For his DPS builds, this build changes depending on your constellation level, as his C6 opens him up to many other DPS build paths. Pre C6, your Sands should be attack percent, your Goblet should be animal damage, and your Circlet should be crit. I know some people might consider using a hybrid build with an EM Sands, but honestly the trade-off for both his damage and support potential makes this not worth using without C6. For my fellow C6 gamers, your build path is incredibly diverse. You can run either an attack percent or elemental mastery sands, an elemental mastery, animal damage, or attack percent goblet, and obviously a crit circlet. The reason why you can run an attack goblet is because his C6 offers so much percentage damage bonus to his normal charge and plunge attacks already, so you can trade off that bonus by supplementing more attack to Kazaha if you are already using an EM Sands. My personal C6 build is using an EM Sands, attack percent goblet, and a crit circlet. My crit ratio ends up being 71 to 161 with 502 elemental mastery, making this more of a hybrid type build. The greatest benefit of his C6 is that you can build Kazuo in so many different ways, so it's really fair game and anything goes in terms of build path at this constellation. 
Moving on to Artifact set recommendations, his best set is easily 4-piece Viridescent Venera. There is no second best option. This allows Kaza to shred the enemy's resistance by 40% based off the element he swirls, which is huge when combined with his A4 to boost his team's main DPS damage. I'll say that unless you play a main DPS Kaza that doesn't rely on a lot of other elemental damage in the party, you should always stick to this set. For those who wish to increase Kazwa's personal damage slightly, you can also opt for 2 piece combinations with Viridescent Venera, Desert Pavilion Chronicle, or any of the Attack plus 18% sets. I will say that I highly advise against using these 2 piece combinations, as the damage you lose from the 4 piece VV bonus is likely going to be greater than the damage you gain on Kazaha. So only use this set if you're running something weird that doesn't rely on a swallowable element, like using him in a Geo team or running Mono Animal. <laughs> Moving on to team comps, you can probably guess it by now, but Kazwa is one of the most versatile characters on the roster. If you play any team with a swirlable element, then Kazwa is likely going to be a good fit in that team. Hyper carry teams are all likely going to need Kazwa, such as with a Raiden hyper carry, and freeze teams also greatly benefit from Kazwa, thanks to his burst making it easier to maintain freeze uptime when infused. It's really hard to say what teams don't need Kazwa since he's used in so many of them, but off the top of my head, certain characters like Yoimiya and Hu Tao don't really need Kazwa since they have a harder time receiving Kazwa's buff and have easier ways of getting consistently high damage. Kazaha's usefulness in a team will greatly depend on the main DPS you are playing. Regarding Dendro teams though, Kazaha is a lot less useful these days thanks to the rise of many Dendro reactions not benefiting from animal application. But he is still good in a very select few teams. Aggravate based teams in particular with an Electro DPS can still benefit greatly from Kazaha, such as with an Aggravate Kaching or Yaimiko team. Finally, for my Giga Chat main DPS Kazaha users, you have a few team options. Firstly, Faruzan and Bennett are going to be huge for Kazuha's personal damage, with Faruzan giving more damage bonus and extra crowd control if you have her at C6. Bennett gives a mountain of attack, which is always welcome. Your last slot though is pretty flexible. There are a huge number of characters that can fill in this role, such as a Constellation for Jin and Mona increasing his personal damage, and sub DPSs like Sing Chiu or Xiang Ling, both are really good for increasing the overall team damage as well. In general, as long as you have Faruzan and Bennett in the team, it's pretty set. As some of you might know, Kazo is consistently one of the most used characters in Spiral Abyss. That alone should be a testament to his flexibility in terms of team comps, so if you have a character that can benefit from his A4, Kazo will likely be a great fit for the team. Even in a few specific teams where he doesn't offer much buffing potential, his crowd control is still invaluable in certain Abyss chambers to wipe out small waves of trash mobs. So, Kazo will probably do well no matter where you place him. Kaza is an excellent character at Constellation Zero, and I don't think you really need his constellations. But he has some really good early ones that we'll cover. Constellation 1. This gives him one extra charge of his skill after he uses his burst. Often at C0, there is a dilemma of whether to use his burst or skill first due to several factors like crowd control order or infusion priority, but with this constellation, you can always use his skill before his burst, then use his skill again. This helps his crowd control a little bit more and also lowers his ER requirements thanks to the additional particles, but does extend his field time by a significant amount. So the usefulness of this constellation is a bit hit or miss. This is a pretty good constellation, but not really worth the primo gems for low spenders or free to plays. Constellation 2, easily Kazuha's best constellation. This grants 200 EM to Kazuha and the active character when you are within his burst field. This is really useful for certain team comps, not so much for certain others. Reaction based teams like Melt Gan Yu, Child International, or Aggravate Kaching will all love this as the additional EM is a pretty sizable increase to damage. Because this EM increase applies to Kaza himself as well, this also increases his A4 buff by 8%, which is pretty nice. This constellation is a good breakpoint for those who wish to pull more copies of Kaza, as it increases his support potential by a good amount. Constellation 3 and Constellation 5 increase his skill and burst talents by 3 levels respectively, pretty normal stuff. Constellation 4. This constellation is pretty self-explanatory, as it lowers his ER requirements by a nice amount. But the gliding bit of this constellation is only really practical in the overworld, and is basically completely useless in Domains and Spiral Abyss. This constellation is okay, but not really one I would consider very good. Constellation 6. This is the constellation to aim for if you wish to increase Kaza's damage by a ton. First, he gains animal infusion after using his skill, which makes him a very viable on-field damage dealer. His normal, charged, and plunge attacks get damage bonus scaling of 20% of his elemental mastery as well, which is massive. 
With my C6 build, I have around 500 EM, which amounts to 100% damage bonus. That is the equivalent of two elemental goblets, and you gain even more once his C2 is active. This constellation hugely diversifies his build path, as he now becomes a very capable main DPS, though it's still never going to be as competitive as an actual top tier DPS that is buffed by Kazaha. From a meta perspective, I don't really recommend anyone pull for this constellation, as it doesn't help his support potential at all, but if you are like me and wish to increase his damage by a ton, then go all the way for it. So yeah, Kaza has really good early constellations. His C1 and C2 are especially very good, and honestly, I don't recommend pulling beyond those two unless you are like me and really really like Kazaha. Finally, onto the Abyss Showcase. Unlike my previous guides, I will not be showing a continuous Abyss run, rather, I will be showing different team comps with different builds to demonstrate his various teams and playstyles. Please enjoy the showcase. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching this Kaza guide. I worked really hard on this one, and I hope it was helpful for everyone. I wish everyone the best of luck pulling Kazaha, and do check out twitch.tv slash dukc as well, where I often stream Genshin Impact. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.